Hey guys, this is Akarat Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars Squadrons video. Just another reminder that we did just launch a Patreon for X2. So if you guys want to directly support the channel and you've got a little bit of extra money, you can pledge over at patreon.com slash X2. There are a bunch of really cool rewards for anyone that pledges, and I'm sure when Squadrons comes along, there'll be something allowing you guys to join a squadron with us, and the money will be going to help us improve the channel. Anyway, of the four starships, classes in Star Wars Squadrons, support ships are certainly the biggest enigma for most people. I mean, we all sort of understand what a U-Wing and a TIE Reaper does in battle, but how will they play in the games? Because U-Wings and TIE Reapers are largely transport ships, and there's not really anything you need to drop off during the game. So today we'll be talking about the support ship, I want to mention a few strategies that I found to be successful, and just generally, I want to talk about how different the ship plays to the other classes, but how it's also very very fun. So like every ship in Star Wars Squadrons, each starfighter can have several custom loadouts. So basically you can have an X-Wing that's meant mainly for bombing or a heavy anti-fighter Y-Wing. The support ship has perhaps the most variation out of any ship class because it has a variety of unique offensive and support features. There are plenty of YouTubers who have went over the different ways you can customize your ship. I know that both Azatru and Bombastic have done great videos covering that very topic, so I won't go too in-depth, but as an example, aside from just the general options of missiles and torpedoes and whatever else, the U-Wing and the TIE feature have some unique abilities only available to their ship. As an example, they can tractor beam an enemy to hold it in place. They can drop auto turrets, which in the build I played were actually very, very effective. Now, if a U-Wing is using those two features, well, it's going to be a lot more aggressively focused than a U-Wing, which uses one of its component slots for resupply and maybe the other one to shield friendly fighters, which are both options. When you take those customization options alongside the other things you can change out, including your hull type, making your ship either faster and slower at the cost or benefit of durability, your type of shielding and thrust and countermeasures, you can obviously have support ships which operate in very different roles. Unfortunately, I only really tried a support ship with the standard loadout and in the build I played, that was the resupply and the auto turret with standard countermeasures, weapons, shielding, hull, and engines. That made for a fairly defensive TIE Reaper, but even within that sort of subclass, there are other options that you could have out. You could swap out your regular auto turret for an ion auto turret. There are various features that help you mask your squadron. So even within the niche of a fairly defensive support ship, there's a lot of opportunity for different gameplay. And of course, you can also be a support vessel more directly involved in attacking capital ships or other starfighters. And as a note, I actually went on a huge support ship spree in dogfights where I think I got like eight kills or something plus a lot of assists thanks to the turret. So let's talk about how the gameplay differed using this support setup in fleet battles versus an interceptor, a fighter, or a bomber. And one thing you have to know about the support ship is that it is very, very sturdy, especially alongside power to shields, but it's not nearly as fast or maneuverable as any of the other fighters, and it doesn't have the same sort of extreme potential for damage right ahead of it as a bomber does. So one major tip about using a support ship that I mentioned in prior episodes at least one of the class that I used, was to change your targeting to focus only on friendly starfighters. That really helped declutter the map for me. You can basically hold the L button. It brings up a wheel of different things you can target, whether that's all enemy fighters, enemy AI fighters, enemy player controlled fighters, friendly ships, friendly capital ships, whatever else. I focused on friendly fighters, and when they were low, I got close enough to use the resupply, which was extraordinarily helpful. I talked about in a prior video just how detrimental dying is in fleet battles. Not only are you out of the game for 15 entire seconds, but you also get a massive loss in morale, so you want to stay alive as much as possible. The support ship helps that, and if you're working with a good team, you can really stay alive for a very very long time. You should encourage your teammates when playing support to not only communicate through mic, but also mark themselves when under fire or when in danger. 
because that will just make them easier to find. However, when someone's injured and you're playing support, there will also be a flashing health indicator next to their name, so that really helps. However, as a support ship, you also want to make sure that you are very visible to your teammates. So what I would suggest is using the Y up Y combination on an Xbox controller. That allows your team to see exactly where you are, because dogfights really can be disorienting, and sometimes your scanner is hard to read when you're flying around in circles. A marker on the physical map is much, much easier to spot and then the friendly ship can come towards you. So a few notes about the specific abilities that I was using. First of all, the resupply not only heals your teammate, but also replenishes their munitions and their countermeasures. One nice feature is that if you're within a certain range, I think it's a few hundred meters, and you're pointed generally in their direction, the resupply will lock on, and unless they willfully try to avoid it, it will hit them. This is good because it means both sides don't really need to coordinate. As long as you know you want to resupply your ally, even if they're flying around wildly, you can still probably do so. And you get some nice points for doing so as well. So when on offense, I would stay pretty far back from the battle. You don't need to play like this, but I wasn't focused on getting kills. I was having a really fun time just supporting my team. There's three lanes on the Nadiri Shipyards map. However, you can actually move between the various lanes, although you do have to do a bit more complex flying, there's girders and whatever else in the way. I would pay attention to whichever enemy frigates my team was attacking or attacking en masse, and I would move to that lane to provide some support. Usually I would stay at the very rear, I would put full power to shields, frontal shields, I would stay fairly stationary, sometimes even moving in and out of girders or construction beams or whatever else, then stepping up when necessary to resupply my team. Another thing that I would do is get as close to the battle as I could sometime, use my auto turret on top of the enemy frigate, which would help thin out the enemy starfighter ranks and give my ship some more room to breathe. But there's nothing to say that you can't also put in pot shots, whether at enemy fighters or the frigates. It all depends on your level of risk aversion, but once your shields are fully charged and face to the front, you might as well put power to lasers and take shots at whatever flies by. Especially because I noticed as a support ship, a little bit far back from the battle, you're playing much more tactically and often the enemy will just ignore you, which works out really well because you can do your support job but also get a few kills. Another very, very crucial thing you can do as a support ship is when you're not busy, farm the AI fighters at the middle of the map, because there aren't just player ships in fleet battles, there are also dozens of AI fighters. They're not nearly as deadly as player ships, but they still do give you some morale. So as a support ship, because you don't need to be up near the frigates, you can just kill AI fighters and you are getting real morale to help your team out. Something like an auto cannon can also do that quite passively, which is nice. When it came to defense, one thing I like to do as a raider is because I had such high durability, I would basically park myself somewhere with full power to weapons and try to take out a few of the more nimble and fast ships as they were flying by, almost just waiting for them and marking them so my enemies could take them if I didn't. Then it's basically the same thing, you move back and forth between your various frigates, you support your ships however you need to, you're always firing your auto cannon and your resupply, and you just really want to keep friendly starfighters alive, again, in at least the build that I play as with the playstyle that I was using. There are other options. I mean, I can really see a lot of people using the Slamjet on the support ship, which allows it to get really fast boosts. It sort of takes down the maneuverability, so you won't be able to move laterally as fast or, you know, turn. But because you're so durable and you have all these interesting abilities, you can fly into the enemy frigate, do some damage or pop some whatever off onto the battlefield and get out of there. I can also see people having a specific supply ship that they use simply to protect their capital ship. For example, one of the countermeasures can be dropped in front of the capital ship to help protect against incoming damage. It's basically just like particles that you drop in front of the ship, which helps protect it from lasers and projectiles. It's not really as useful in some respects as a dedicated shaft system because 
if, if you're moving side to side, it won't be able to protect you very well because you'll be out of its protective range. Whereas most ships use like an intelligent countermeasure system, but it could be useful for protecting the capital ship as could the shield booster or the repair systems on the support ship. So there's that. And I really do think that every single squadrons in fleet battles and even dogfight mode needs to have a support ship. And I'll tell you, as a player in one of the other ship classes, there's nothing that's much more frustrating or deflating than a really good support player because they can defend their ship so well they can drop that auto cannon to help throw you off your game they can heal a ship when it's almost dead or they can use something like the squadron masks feature to just make the whole team more effective this is of course a two-way street because if an enemy ship gets behind your support vessel well you need to get back to protect it there are some very high yield missiles the multi-lock for example with enough time can probably one shot a support ship so without that maneuverability and typically without repair systems like many ships will have other players will need to come back and help if the support vessel is being overwhelmed but trust me it will be worth it and the support ship can also put a lot of power to its shields and it has a fairly sturdy hull so having an enemy aggroed on it isn't necessarily the worst thing if you can come by and support it during its time of need but that's all i've got for today i'm wondering what kind of support ships do you think will be popular in star wars squadrons will there be an anti-capital ship support vessel just because of its really great durability Ability. Will enough people play support? Admittedly, that is one of my concerns. However, I'm certain that when you get a full team together on mic, playing support will be one of the most fun roles and will definitely appeal to a certain type of player. My final question is, is that player you? Can you see yourself playing support? Do you play support generally in other games? And what's lacking right now for the U-Wing and the TIE Reaper? And what do you think is good? All of that and more, please, down in the comments. Until next time, though, guys, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. Have a safe one and may the force be with you.